mindset is I'm here, yet your girl makes, and I'm here with Mr. Seeklet. So first time we've worked together, and today we are doing maths revision. Because you know what? You guys are writing maths tomorrow, DBE. I hope you know that. Because I posted on the page for you guys. Hope you're watching right now. So I wanted to know how your exam went today. Tell us about it. I did post it on the page. But Seeklet, how have you been? I've been good. <laughs> Just traffic, good. job and traffic. You oh, are no. I'm gonna m I might move to Melville. How cool is that? I'm following you. Ah, right, uh, right here. Exactly. Anyway, guys, Samsung, you know exactly what I'm going to say all about it. It's the Learning Hub downloaded on Samsung devices or premium smartphones. Also, guess what? We have a Galaxy Note 8. Can you see it? Oh, look at that beautiful thing. It is going to be up for grabs in the next draw for the next show. So, you know what? I think you should stay tuned because for the IEB schools, we have grade 12 physics after this at 6 p.m. So, that is when this bad boy is going to be shown. So I suggest you watch because there are six other devices to be won as well. Three Samsung tablets and three Galaxy Note tabs. How exciting is that? I can't believe it. So you know what to do. You don't know what to do. Let me tell you. You go and you download the race number on our notes. You download the notes. I've posted the link for you for today's show. Write down the race number. Okay. Enter the competition. And we have six more draws to go, guys. Come on. It's the last leg. You guys have already started this hurdle. So I suggest you do that and get to it. Let me just show you. This Galaxy Note tab. Please just take a nice, good look at it. Proudly sponsored by Samsung, of course. Ah, I think it's beautiful. And I just want to tell you guys that grade 12s, ah, you know how much we've missed you because now this is your time to shine, eh? Finals, finals, finals. So next week we are launching a competition especially for you. So I suggest you register on Curio. Everything is going to be posted on the page for you. You have to register and we'll tell you all about the details next week and how you can win fantastic prizes. But for now, that's all from me and I think we should just get started with some maths for grade 12s. Alright guys, thank you very much. Uh, we can get started with some maths now. Um, I am going to start with question two because I seem to have lost my calculator here for financial mathematics. So I'll do question two, three, and then go back to your finance. Right? Um, these questions were taken from your February, March um, 2013, your paper one. So this was uh, question 9.2 of um, paper one, which is your calculus. Right? Now, they want you to find the derivative. You need to work out what your dy divided by dx if y is given that it's 2 root x plus 1 all divided by x squared. Now, guys, remember, before we find the derivative, we make sure that x is not a denominator, x is not under the radical sign, and it's always x to exponent something. But here, watch x is a denominator, and also here we've got the square root. So we need to simplify first, right? So now, the simplification, you've got your y equals to 2. Now, guys, this Square root of x is the same as x to exponent half divided by x squared plus 1 divided by x squared. Now, the reason why I'm saying divide by x squared, divide by x squared, because it's all divided by x squared. So it means that each and every term has got a denominator of x squared. Right. Now, we're still simplifying, guys. So you've got your, now, uh, you've got 2. Now the bases are the same, you're dividing, so you've got x to half divided by x to exponent 2, so you'll have x to half minus 2, which gives us x to exponent minus 3 divided by 2, right? Plus, now watch, here still we have x as a denominator, so we take it up, it changes the sign, so you've got x to exponent minus 2, right? So now, next, can you all see that you've got y equals to 2x to exponent something plus x to exponent something. So we can find the derivative straight away now. So you've got dy dx equals to. Now remember, for finding the derivative here, if you've got your x to exponent n, you take your exponent, multiply by the coefficient, which is 1 in this case. So you've got n x to exponent n minus 1. So this is your rule, remember? So now next. I've got 2x to exponent minus 3 divided by 2. So you've got your exponent times your coefficient, which we get minus 3. x to exponent minus 3 
divided by 2 minus 1. So we get negative 3 divided by 2 minus 2 x to exponent minus 3. Right. So now this is our derivative. But if they said, so this is, sorry, this is 5 divided by 2, because you've got minus 3 divided by 2 minus 1, which is minus 2 over 2, that is minus 5 over 2. Right. Now, but if they said leave your answer to positive exponents, so you're going to have your minus 3 divided by x to exponent 5 under the square root minus 2 divided by x cubed. So this is the derivative of that first function. Right. Now, guys, we move on to the next one. Now, question number 2. 2.2. 2. Calculate the values of a and b if f of x equals to ax squared plus bx plus 5 has a tangent at x equals to minus 1, which is defined by the following equation, and the equation is y equals to minus 7x plus 3. Now, let's just start by understanding this question. This is a, okay, right, this is a quadratic function, right? You've got your f of x equals to ax squared plus bx plus 5. So we can have a function like this, right? So say, for instance, this is your rough positive parabola. Okay, so now, this is your graph, uh, ax squared plus bx plus 5. Now, a tangent, remember, a tangent is a line that touches a curve only at one point. So you've got, uh, say, for instance, this is a point. Now, remember, we had minus 1. So this is your minus 1. And then we can sketch, right, uh, now let's get the tangent, All right, it's a tangent not tandega. This is a tangent touches the curve at one point. Now, remember this point is negative one and something. Now, very important, this point is shared by two functions, which is your parabola and also a straight line. But now the nice thing about this question is that we are given the straight line, the equation of a straight line, which is y equals to minus 7x plus 3. So we can get what y is by substituting with that value, which is your minus 1. So I've got y equals to minus 7, bracket minus 1, plus 3. Now this is minus 7. By minus 1, we get a 7 plus 3. And this is 10. So this is minus 1 and 10. Now, the point is minus 1 and 10, right? Now, next I've got the equation y equals to ax squared plus bx plus 5. Now, I know two things here. I know the x value and the y value. So I can substitute because this is also part of the parabola. I can substitute on this equation. My main aim is to find the value of a and the value of b. So let's substitute. You've got 10 as y equals to a bracket minus 1 squared plus b minus 1 plus 5. Now, let's just do some quick simplification here. I've got 10 equals to a minus b plus 5. Now, guys, I've got 10 equals to a minus b plus 5. I can make one variable the subject of the formula. So if we can take the b across, so we get b is a take this 10 across, it's going to be 5 minus 10, I get a minus 5. So this is our first equation. So we've got equation number 1 now, right? So we've got equation number 1 from the information that we got that this is a parabola, we've got the point that is shared, minus 1, 10. Now, let's just go back. How do we find the gradient of a tangent? Remember, a gradient of a tangent, we're going to find the derivative of the, the function, which is your f at x, in this case it's a parabola, find the equation, uh, you find the derivative. Once you find the derivative, you take your x value, you substitute, then you get your m, which is your gradient of the tangent. Now, let's do that. You've got f of x equals to ax squared plus bx plus 5. So you have y, sorry, f of x equals to ax squared plus bx plus 5. Now, how do you find the derivative? So I'm going to say now, watch, 
the notation changes here. I've got f prime x equals to, now the derivative is going to be 2 ax plus b. Now, again, very important. We are given the gradient, guys. The gradient is given. The gradient of a tangent is negative 7. So I can sub in the minus 7, the gradient, so minus 7. But the gradient way when x equals to minus 1, so I've got 2 a, the value of x is minus 1, plus b. So now, this is minus 2a plus b equals to minus 7. I can as well here make b the subject. So I've got b equals to 2a minus 7. This is equation number 2. Right. So I've got equation 1, which is b equals to a minus 5. And equation number 2, b equals to 2a minus 7. Can you all see that we're now going back to simultaneous equations, which is your question one for tomorrow, right? So you've got b equals to a minus 7 and b equals to a minus 5. Now, both equations equals to b, so you can equate those two equations. So I've got 2a minus 7 equals to a minus 5. So I have a minus 5. Now, this is just basic um, algebra, you've got a 2a, take this a across, so you've got 2a across, so you get 2a minus a, that is a, equals to minus 5 plus 7, that's 2, right? So we've got the value of a, that it is 2. So we've got a equals to 2. Now it's easy to find b, you take it back to any of the equation, so I've got b equals to a minus 5. So b is a minus 5. We already know the value of a, that it's 2, so you've got 2 minus 5, then you get minus 3. So b is minus 3. So the value of a is 2, and b is minus 3. Now, guys, the easy way of checking if your answers are correct, now you take it back to your equation, all right? Now work backwards. At the end of the day, when, once you're done with your paper tomorrow, please don't panic. You do it like this, done, move on to the next questions. Once you're done, you're going checking your answers now. So let's take it back. I have ax squared plus bx plus 5. So this is f of x equals to ax squared plus bx plus 5. Now x is minus 1. Right? We know that a is 2, b is minus 3. So we have the function f of x equals to 2x squared minus 3x plus 5. Now, guys, you ask yourself, right, I've got the function f of x equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 5. Now, the question that I'm going to ask you is to work out what is the equation of the tangent to this function f of x equals to 2x squared minus 3x plus 5 where x is negative 1. Right, we can go to a break. If <laughs> <laughs> you just like went, pow, break time. You think it's right. time for a break. Okay. Well, if that's what C-Class says, I think it is time for a break. Mindsetters, quickly jump up and down, grab a glass of water, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, Matrix. So I know you guys are stunning. You are, your brains are fried because all of this information is trying to go into your head. Oh, and I know you just want to give up. Believe me, I know, I know. But you have to push through this because this revision you don't get anywhere else here at Mindset. Let me not forget, I have to tell you where to get all or talk to me on the page. And that's facebook.com forward slash learn extra. I've just posted the notes for you. Download them into the competition and just download them so you can go through Sikhle and my, well, Sikhle is most, like mainly, his examples that we have especially for you. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Sikhle because he actually got a calculator because he started the sum and he realized he didn't have a calculator. Thank you. Guys, I've got the calculator. Someone is throwing the calculator. <laughs> it's guys from Soweto. All right. Um, I asked you a question earlier on before we went to break. You've got your function of x equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 5. Because they can ask this question in this manner and say, you're given f of x equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 5. Find the equation of a tangent where x equals 2 minus 1. So what you do is, you've got your y will be 2 bracket minus 1 squared minus 3 minus 1 plus 5. Work it out, you get 2 plus 3 plus 5, that's a 10. So you've got y is 10, right? Now you find the derivative of the curve. So you've got your f prime x equals to 4x 
minus 3, which is this, the derivative of this function. And f prime minus 1 is 4 bracket minus 1 minus 3, which gives us minus 7. Now, what you do is, because you're looking for the equation of a straight line, so you've got your y minus y1 equals to m into x minus x1, right? Now you've got y1, you've got x1, you've got minus 1 and 10, so this is y minus 10 equals to x is minus 7 bracket x plus 1 because you have minus 1 minus 1, and that is y equals to negative 7x minus 7 plus 10, which is y equals to negative 7x plus 3. Now you go back and check the given information. Watch, y equals to minus 7x plus 3, so it means that you've done everything correct. The value of a is 2, and your b is negative 3. I hope that helps. Now, guys, we go back to our question, the first question where I did not have a calculator. Now, watch. The question is a finance question. They're saying, Jeffrey invests 700 rand per month into an account, earning interest at the rate of 8%. Okay, let's just write this statement, the whole statement. Take it out of this uh, English and back to maths, right? So Jeffrey invests 700, okay, into an account that earns interest at 8% per annum, 8% per annum, all right? Compounded monthly, now guys watch, compounded monthly, we're going to divide our interest by 12 and then we're going to multiply your n by 12. Now, his friend, right, his friend said, Sipo also invests 700 rands, right, so seven, 700 per month and ends interest uh, compounded semi-annually, right, so it ends interest compounded semi at R percent per rate, so you've got, you don't know what interest is, all right, so this is your I, or you can just put R there, but at semi-annually, so you will divide that by two, so you've got, because you have six months, that is every six months, so you, generally in June, July, August, September, December, so you've got those two, right, so you divide by two, so now, next statement, Jeffrey and his friend, uh, friends investment are worth the same at the end of 12 months. So at the end of 12 months, at the end of one year, right? Now you need to calculate what R is, okay? Now, guys, you know for, the, uh, for compound interest, you've got your A equals to P bracket 1 plus I, all to exponent N, right? This is for Jeff, and Jeff invests 700, right? Bracket 1 plus the interest is 8%. 8% compounded monthly, right, to 12 times it's over after one year, right. And then let's look at this guy. This is uh, the final amount for Jeff. And then uh, we said this guy is Sipo. So a S equals to, he invests the same, 700, 1 plus the interest we don't know, divide by 2, but all to 2 times after a year. Now, we go back and we look at that statement. They're saying at the end of one year, they get the same amount, right? So their investment will be the same at the end of 12 months, which is your one year. So it means that your AJ will be the same as your AS. So we equate the two. So I've got 700 bracket 1 plus 8% divided by 12 but all to 12 equal to 700, bracket 1 plus i divided by 2, but all to 2. So that i, which is the interest we want to calculate that r that they're asking us. Now, guys, we want to get the value of i. That's interest. Right? Now, we want to get rid of everything that is next to or below your i and whatnot. So we apply the basic algebra as well. So the first thing that is... Next to that, you've got your 700, so I'll divide by 700 on both sides. Divides by uh, 700, and then the 700 shows the other 700, this 700 shows 700. <laughs> okay, right. Charles. So that's gone. So you have now 1 plus 8 percent. <laughs> She's laughing at me. <laughs> so ah. cute. All right, so you've got 1 plus 8 percent divided by 12, but all to 12 equals 1 plus i divided by 2, all to 2. I want to get rid of this two. So I can either multiply by a half or just square root on both sides. So if I square root, now watch. 
I'll get the square root of 1 plus 8 percent divided by 12, but all to 12 equals to 1 plus i divided by 2, all right? Now, remember, my main aim is to get what i is, the interest for this guy, the next guy, which is simple in this case. So I've got the plus 1. So the undo of addition is subtraction. So I'm going to subtract 1. So I'll have 1 plus 8 percent divided by 12, all to 2, minus 1, equals 2. Now, I'm left with this part. I'm not going to write everything. So I'm left with i divided by 2. It's divided by 2, so the undo of division is multiplication. So I'm going to multiply by 2 on both sides. So I'm multiplying the whole thing by 2. So I get i. Now, after that, all hard work. So I can just go and get my natural display, which is my calculator here. So I have this. Now, you type in everything. So I've got a 2. Now, please do it with me at home. Uh, bracket, I have the square root, OK? Uh, I've got the bracket there. And then the square root of 1 plus the 8%, uh, 1 plus 8 uh, percent, so this should be 8 percent divided by 2. I hope this is going to work. Uh, put a bracket there and then close and then subtract 1 and then we close the bracket. No. Right, let's get another calculator. This one is messing up. Okay, right. Guys, can you quickly, please, at home, work out what is um, his interest here will be at the end of the, first, uh, of the first year? Right, I'll come back and sort out my calculator, but the interest at the end of the first year, please post your answers on Facebook, and then I'm going to check it uh, with my sister here. All right, hey, so yeah. now I am going to go on to the next question. Which is your application of calculus? Right. So now they're saying here, a rectangular box is constructed in such a way that the length of the base is three times as long as the width. The material used to construct the top and the bottom of the box uh, costs 100 rand per square meter. The material used to construct the sides of the box cause 50 per square meter, and the box must have a volume of 9 cubic meters. Let the width of the box be x. So it's given here. The width is x. Now we are told that the length is 3 times the width. So L, this will be 3 times x. Now, find an expression for the height of the box in terms of x. Now, Guys, we need to go back and check the given information, right? Our information here is that the volume is 9 cubic meters. So now let's remember the formula for volume. Volume will be length times breadth times height. But the volume is given. They're saying volume is 9, right? The length is 3 times the breadth times your B is X times the height, right? We need to make H the subject of the formula. Now, what you do is, in this case, I want to make X the subject. I'm going to divide through by 3X by X. So if I divide on the right-hand side by 3X squared, I will divide by 3X squared as well on the left-hand side. Now, I get H equals 2. Now, 9 divided by 3, that's 3, divided by X squared. Guys, this is your first three marks, right? So h equals to 3 divided by x squared. While you're still taking that one down, I'm moving on to the next question, sorry. Right, now, the next question. They saying show that the cost of con uh, to construct the box can be expressed by c equals to 1,200 divided by x plus 600 x squared. Now, we need to go back to the information given. Now, 
I had a box earlier on, but now it's, it's, it's okay. Right? Now we need to construct that box, but the information that is given here, it says, now watch, the material used to construct the top and the bottom, right? The top and the bottom, right? Started from the bottom, now we're here, right? So the top and the bottom, so it's this part and that part. Now we know that this is 3x. This is now 3 divided by x squared. Now the top part, we've got 3x there and then x. Now the top, to calculate the area of the top, we're going to have length times breadth, which is 3x times x, right? But this will be identical to the bottom part, so I'm going to have cost equals 2. Now we said the top part is going to be 3x by x, all right? Now times 2, because it's the same, the top will be the same as the bottom part. Now. We go back again, and then we check. They're saying the top and the bottom, it cost 100 per square meter. So I'm going to multiply that by 100. So this is times by 100. Now we're done with the top and the bottom. So we're going to look at the sides now. Right, so plus now the sides. Let's look at the front part, right? So this part and the back part. So the area of this front part will be 3x and the 3 divided by x squared. So the area of the front part will be 3x by 3 divided by x squared times 2, guys, because the front part will be the same as the back part, right? Times, now, we go back and check the information again. They're saying the material used to construct the sides of the box costs 50 rands per square meter. So this is going to be multiplied by 50. Multiplied by 50. Plus, so we're done with the front and the back. Now I'm going on the side sides. This side and that other side. So the left side, okay, look at the right side. It's 3 divided by x and x. So we have now plus, let me just proceed here, 3 divided by x squared times the x. Now, guys, times 2. Why are we saying times 2? It's the same left and also the right. Now, times 50, because they are telling us that uh, it, it, we need 50 bucks to, uh, per square meter on the sides. Now, let's just quickly work out what this gives us. So I've got C equals 2. Now, 2 times 3, it's, it used to be 6 times 100. That is uh, 600 x by x is x squared. Okay, so you've got 600 x squared plus. Now this part, I've got 2, uh, 3 by 3, that's uh, a 9. Is that right? Okay, let's start with this one. So we've got 6, uh, 50 times 2, that's 100 plus that you get 300. So you've got 300 divided by x plus. Now that Let's just double check there. We've got uh, 2 by 3x times x divided by, you have 3 divided by x squared, right? And then the 3x, so what do you get there? That's, uh, right, so you've got 3x times 3. Where did I get that 3 from? This is 3x by 3 divided by x, so that will be 9 times, no, this 3 is not there, right? So you've got your 6, it's, it looks like it's a 3x, right? So you've got your um, 50, that's 100 times, oh yes, this is 3x times 3, which is 9, right? Times 100, that is 900, right? So that is 900, divide by x. Now, guys, next, we have your 600x squared plus. Now, the 300 plus the 900, we get 1,200 divided by x. Now, this is what they were asking us to prove. They're saying, show that the cost to construct the box can be expressed as 1,200 divided by x plus 600 x squared. And that is the correct answer. So now, just to recap, you've got your sides, two sides, which are identical. 
So you've got the error of those two times two. Now the bottom and the top part, you need 100 bucks to construct that. So I hope this works. So your final answer is 600 x squared plus 1,200 divided by x. Break time. Two. You ready? Yebo. Yebo. Okay, guys. Oh, well, I just hear x, 3x, x, 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 and I know your brains are exactly like mine at the moment. So I think it is time for a break. Quickly go get some water. We'll be here right back after the break. Welcome, grade 12. Your time to shine. We are here especially for you. So my director slash producer said that I told you about some competition next week and obviously you know I haven't been here for two weeks so I'm obviously just getting a little bit jumbled so facts are facts let me tell you what I actually meant Curio is starting now not next week not two weeks from now right now download the link is posted on our Facebook page facebook.com forward slash learn extra with an X and you enter you register on Curio and for today the um, password or keyword or the thing you have to enter is M12. So obviously maths 12. Okay. So it's today. It's not next week. So just I'm a little bit corrected on that. But you know what? I'm going to leave the maths up to Sikhle because I think he's got his calculator out and he knows exactly what he's doing, right? Okay. Thank <laughs> you very much. I've got my calculator on. <laughs> I get 0.081. Now, to get it into a percent, we multiply it by 100. So this is 8.13. I don't know if you guys have got the same thing. All right, but now let's just recap. Uh, let's look at your, your solution. How did I arrive to that one? I have a bracket here, which uh, I've got the square root of 1 plus 8%, all divided by 12, divided by 12, close bracket to exponent 12, right? And then we close the bracket there. And then we have a minus one, close. Then we get that. But still, we have to multiply by that to the outside two, which is this times 100, which gives us 8.13. So he gets 8.13%. So his interest, investing that 700 to get the same amount as Jeffrey, it's going to be 8.13. Oh, all right. well, can, I can I tell you all these people that told that answer? Let's uh, just check. Calden Charles Coombe says 8.13, and that was 12 minutes ago. Okay. Uh, Brittany Moodley, 12 minutes ago, 8.13. Troy Raju, interest equals 8.13. And I'm sure there was someone else. Yeah, Dineo wonderful, Ricciti. Wonderful, wonderful. These guys are working very hard. Now, thank you guys. That was 8.13. Now, we need to find now, they're saying your, your last question, the one that we just did, all right? We worked it out. We got 600x squared plus 1200 divided by x. Now, the follow-up question will be, Now, we already worked out your C is 600 x squared plus 1200 divided by x. Now, they're saying calculate the width of the box. That is the value of x if the cost is to be a minimum. Now, guys, remember in your application of calculus, when they're using the word minimum or maximum, you find a derivative, right? So you work out your derivative and you equate it to zero. You work out what the value of x is. Now, remember earlier on we said, okay, we cannot find the derivative while we have uh, the, the x as the denominator. So we need to simplify that. So you've got your c equals to 600 x squared plus 1,200 x to exponent minus 1. Now, guys, finding the derivative here. So we're going to say dc dx equals to. Now the derivative here will be 1,200 x minus 1,200 x to exponent minus 1 minus 1, which is a negative 2. Now we said we're going to equate this to naught equals 1,200 x minus 1,200 x to minus 2. Now we want to work out what x is. So we've got your minus 1,200. I can take it across so I get 1,200 uh, because that is 
negative, right? So it's a negative exponent. So this is divided by x squared equals to 1,200x. Now I want to find the value of x. I have x squared as a denominator, which, is, which can be my LCD, and it is in this case. So I'll multiply by x squared throughout, so I get 1,200 equals 1,200x cubed, because now I've got x squared times x, all right? So now I will divide by 1,200 both sides. I get 1 equals to x cubed. So therefore, x is 1. So for this to be a minimum, you need to have your x equals to 1, all right? Now, so you found the value of x. And remember, if they said, OK, now hence find the minimum cost, then you sub in your x value. All right, so now, guys, we move on to the next question, which was, in your paper one as well, which was uh, 1.2. Can I give you a question someone asked? Okay. Oh, now my computer is fighting with me. Just, I think okay. just explain right. that and I'll ask you now. Question. Okay, yeah. we'll get that during break. All right. Now, guys, you're given that 2 to x plus 2 x plus, these are exponents, right? This is written as 2 to x plus 2. x plus 2, it's minus 5y plus 20. So this is equal to minus 5y plus 20. Now we want to express 2x in terms of y. What does this mean? We must have 2 to exponent x as the subject of a formula equal to something with the y on the right hand side. So let's simplify. The left hand side, I've got an operation sign positive between the terms, right? So I can take out a common factor. So I've got 2 to exponent x plus, break that down, 2 to x times 2 to 2 equals to minus 5y plus 20. All right? Now, it is now clear that the common factor will be 2 to exponent x. So I factor it out. This is 2 to x bracket 2 to x divided by 2 to x is 1 plus 2 to 2, which is 4, equals to minus 5y plus 20. My main aim is to get to 2 to exponent x equals 2 as the subject of the formula. So here I have 2 to x bracket 5 equals to minus 5y plus 20, all right? So now, next, I want to get rid of this 5. It's multiplying, right? So the undo of multiplication will be division, so I divide by 5 throughout. So I divide by 5. So I get 2 to exponent x is negative 5y divided by 5 is negative y plus 20 divided by 5, that's a 4. So now, we have answered their question in saying, make 2 to exponent x the subject of the formula. So I have 2 to x equals to minus, minus y plus 4. All right. Now, thank you. Done with that one. That's 4.1. Okay, can uh, I read? I found my question. Right. Can I read it to you, Sikhle? <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Nanklopimo Mbala says, yeah. Hey there, I just want to ask if we're supposed to know the formulas of volume, Radius, area, when applying calculus, or do they appear on the formula sheets? Oh, my friend, with those ones, yeah. you really have to know them. <laughs> it's just easy. You have to know Shame. your area of a circle, uh, square, your what you call those ones that we did in grade 8, 9, 10, and 11. Okay. But the complicated part, they might give you in the very same question and say maybe the volume of a cylinder will be blah, 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 blah. blah. Yeah. But those ones, Okay, sorry, my friend, you have to know them to learn, my boy. <laughs> sorry. Tough. Right, <laughs> but uh, don't panic, all right? So we've got minus y plus 4, minus y plus 4. Now, the next question says, how many solutions for x will the equation have if y is minus 4? So now, what we basically need to do here is to Substitute by the y value, which is a negative 4. So you've got your 2 to x equals to minus minus 4 plus 4. 2 to x is minus times minus, it's a plus, so you get 4 plus 4. Now, guys, don't get your calculator. 4 plus 4, it's just 8. All right, so we keep it that way. 2 to x equals to 8, but I want to solve for x, so I've got 2 to x is 2 to 3, then x is 3. Now, we have not yet answered the question. They're saying how many solutions for x, will this have if y is minus 4? So you've got only x equals to minus 3, then you conclude, therefore, there will be only one 
solution. Okay, so there will be only one solution for this particular problem. All right. Now, guys, we move on to the next question. Now, this was simplified. This simplified to two to x equals two minus y plus four. If you're not mistaken. Now, solve for x if y is the largest possible integer. Now, remember, they want your integers. So can you give me any integer minus 5, 7? Exactly. That's correct. So we're looking for those numbers. Uh, the value for which 2 to x plus 2 to x plus 2 equals minus 5y plus 20 will have solutions. Now, want the largest possible y. Okay? Now, what we can do here is, now, if I look at the left hand side, this is 2 to exponent x, right? If I sub in the minus 1 here, I get 2 to minus 1, it is a half, right? So that's positive. If I sub in a naught, I get 2 to naught, which is a 1. So I sub in a minus 5, I get positive 1 divided by 32. So this part, this 2 to exponent x, the 2 to exponent x will always be positive, so it will always be greater or equals to 0. So this will, be, will always be positive. Now, so in other words, because we're always saying maths is a subject of balance, if this is positive, your left is positive, so it means that your right has to also be positive. Now, so you've got minus y plus 4 must also be positive, right? So in order for us to work out what y is. So I have minus y is greater than minus 4, making y the subject, so y should be less than 4. Now remember when you divide by negative, your inequality sign changes. So y should be less than 4. Now the first integer that is less than 4, it's 3. So you conclude by saying, therefore y is 3. So y equals to 3, then you take it, you substitute, so you've got your 2, to exponent x equals to minus 3 plus 4, then 2 to exponent x equals to 1, and that is 2 to exponent x equals to 2 to naught, and therefore x equals to 0. Right, so we worked out your y, which is positive 3, because y should be less than 4. The first integer that is less than 4 is 3. I hope that helps. Now, guys, we move on to the next question. Right, because guys, you, you write in tomorrow, if you've got any questions, just post those, those questions, we're going to check them now. Because of time, we're trying to move on and, and get uh, most of the questions done. All right, so now, but you stop me anytime if there's something you don't understand. Now this is, it's given that this is a geometric, now we, we're doing your sequences and series. This is a geometric series. Now remember, with a geometric series, it has got a constant ratio. So r equals to term 2 divided by term 1 will be the same as term 3 divided by term 2 or term 500 divided by term 499. All right. So now find the value of p. This is your term 1, which is 256. Term 2 will be p. Term 3 is 64 and minus 32. Now this is guiding us, the last two, okay? This is term number 3 and term 2. So we can work out what r is by saying minus 32 divided by 64, of which you get negative a half, right? So you've got r equals to negative half. Now remember, with the geometric progression, you've got the first term is a, second term is ar, third term ar squared, ar cubed, and on and on and on. So now, guys, we want to work out p. So p is the second term, so it's going to be ar. But I know that a is 2, 5, 6, right, times your, your r is negative half. Now you can quickly get your calculator at 256, 256 divided by 2, then you get 128. So your, r, your a, I mean your p is uh, 148, if I'm not mistaken. So it's 128. So p is 128. So you have found the value of p, which is 128. Right, now next, they're asking you to find the sum of eight terms of this series. Now, this is a sum of a geometric progression. Now, remember, we've got two formulas, right? So we have Sn equals to A bracket 1 minus Rn divided by 1 minus R, and A bracket 
uh, r to n minus 1 all divided by r minus 1. But if you can use any, you'll get the same answer anyway, right? So now you have your sum of eight terms equals to, our first term is 2, 5, 6, bracket 1 minus r is negative half to exponent 8, but all divided by 1 minus r, in this case, it's negative half, right? Now, let's simplify that. We get 2, 5, 6, bracket 1 minus 1 divided by 2 to exponent 8 is 2, 5, 6. This is all divided by 1 plus a half. We get uh, 2 plus 1, that's 3 divided by 2. So you have 3 divided by 2, right? So now that is, now you can just now, from here, you can just punch in, in, in your calculator. So we've got, um, we can put our calculator there. Now let's work it out. We have 2, 5, 6, right? Um, 2, 5, 6, bracket 1 minus, uh, 1 minus, uh, another bracket 1 divided by 2, 5, 6, and then um, all divided by 3 divided by 2, uh, which is 1,5 then we get 170. So this is 170. So sum of eight terms equals to 170. I hope you all got the same answer. So sum of eight terms will be 170. Now, guys, I just want to show you the next question here. The question is, why does the sum to infinity for this series exist? We go to our break. It's time for break, I think. Break already? Okay, well, yep. guys, I see you're posting your questions because you have quite a few I see now. So I'm going to go through it with Cicle and we're going to get to all of them. I promise you. And if we don't, there's a help desk and I'll tell you about that right after the break. Don't go anywhere. And we're back, Mindsetters. So, you know, it's maths now. Tomorrow you're writing. Share your thoughts. Post on the page. Tell me how you're feeling. Tell me if you're overwhelmed. Tell me if you're ready. Tell me anything. Tell me if you have questions because we're going to go through them. And Cicle and I just said to each other that he's going to sit down and literally go through each of them so that he can help you. You're such a kind person, I'm telling you. I'm so proud. But if you have any more questions, all you have to do is go and send them to www.learnextra with an X dot co dot za forward slash help desk. And they will be answered most definitely. So go for it, Sikhle. Thank you. That's wonderful. I'm impressed. Um, a lot of you guys are paying attention. You working. You want to get these A's tomorrow, right? Um, this one, P equals to negative 1 to 8. You've got a plus there times a minus. You can see some of you are posting on Facebook. This is negative times a positive, which is a minus 2, 5, 6 divided by 2. That's 1 to 8. All right. So our answer there, P is negative 1 to 8, not positive 1 to 8. Now, I'm assuming you've answered this question. Why does the sum to infinity for this series exist? Right? Remember, for a convergent sequence, uh, for a convergent series, your r has to be between minus 1 and 1, right? And in this case, we know that our r is negative half. Now, can you all see that half, negative half is between minus 1 and 1, therefore the sum to infinity for this will exist. Okay, so now we move on to the next question. It says calculate the sum to infinity. You all know that the sum to infinity formula is a divided by 1 minus r. We know that a is 256 divided by 1 minus your r, it's negative half, right? And then we simplify that, we get, now this is going to be 256 divided by, uh, now get another fraction, uh, that will be 3 divided by 2, so 3 divided by 2. And that's 170.67. So we've got 170.67. So sum to infinity is equals to 170.67, which is more or less the same as the sum of eight terms. It's converging to a certain um, a number, which is 170.67. Right. 
Now, guys, we're moving on to our next question, right? Remember to, say, to send your questions, guys, because of time, we're trying to cover this work for you for tomorrow. You given that um, sum of 30 terms, starting from k equals to 1 up to 30, where you've got this function, um, which is 3k plus 5. Now, what does this mean? I'm starting from 1 up to 30, substituting in this formula. So I've got 3 bracket 1 plus 5 plus 3 bracket 2, plus 5, plus 3, bracket 3, plus 5. Now, I will take all your time if I want to write all these terms. So I've got 3. The last term is 30, so I've got 30 plus 5 there. Now, watch. I've started from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I stop at 30 because I'm told that the last term is 30. So now, this is going to help me to see what kind of a sequence is this. Is it arithmetic or geometric? If it's arithmetic, then I'll get the common difference. The first difference will be the same throughout. And if it's geometric, I'll have the same ratio throughout. So now, let's work it out. So I get 8 here, plus 11, plus 14, plus the last term will be 95. Now, guys, this question is asking you to find the sum of all these terms. Now, it looks like this is an arithmetic progression because if you say 11 minus 8, you get a 3. 14 minus uh, 11, it's 3. Then the next one and on and on. So it's going to be constant throughout. So you've got your D is that. Now, to find the sum, remember, guys, the formula to find the sum, it's Sn equals to n divided by 2 bracket 2a plus n minus 1 D close bracket O Sn equals to n divided by 2 bracket a plus l. Now, guys, this formula you use when the last term is given. And in this case, we do have a last term. But if you did not figure out that we've got the last term, then you use this one, you'll get the same answer at the end of the day. So we've got sum of 30 terms, because it's starting from 1 up to 30, um, equals to 30 divided by 2 bracket uh, your first term. Your a is 8 plus your last term is 95. So you get 15 bracket uh, is it 103. Okay, so that is uh, 15 bracket 8 plus 95 close bracket. You get 1545. Right, so your sum of 30 terms is 1545. If we were to add all these terms, right, each and every one manually will get the final answer is 1,545. So the sum of all those terms is 1,545. Now, guys, we move on to the next question. This is your fine functions question, right? We need to read this one very carefully. It's given as 118 is a turning point. So this is our turning point 118, all right, uh, of the graph of f of x equals to x squared plus bx plus c, p and t are the x-intercepts of f, so you've got uh, your p and t, okay, we can see that, x-intercepts, and the graph of g of x is minus 2x plus 8, has an x-intercept at t, so this is our x-intercept, and r is a point of intersection of those two graphs. Now, let's answer the questions. Calculate the coordinates of t. Now, we go back and check t x intercepts of f and t is also the x intercept of uh, the straight line so the straight line is given so you've got y equals to minus 2x plus 8 all right now guys what happens at the x intercept for x intercept you make y zero so you work out zero equals to minus 2x plus 8 then 2x is 4 sorry 2x is 8, I've divided already, so x is 4. So you've got 4 is x. Now, therefore, the coordinates of t, you get 4, and y was 0. So that is your 2 marks. All right? Any questions? Thank you. All right, now, so we move on. Find the equation for f in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Show all your working. Now, guys... 
We have the turning point. We have the x-intercept. Now, what? Very important. We know that this is 4 and not. Now, I'm just going to work out this um, x-intercept. Now, guys, this is a mirror image, right? So the distance from here to there will be the same as from there to there, right? So this will be 1, so it's 3 units there. So it means that here you get minus 2 and not. Now, I'm doing this for some people who will be using those two different equations to find the parabola. Now, I use the first uh, equation. Because I'm given the turning point, there's this equation y equals to a bracket x minus p squared plus q. And you know that p and q are the coordinates of the turning points of p is the x and q is the y. And the other equation that you might also use in this case, because we've worked out two x intercepts, it's y equals to a bracket x minus x1 bracket x minus x2. Now, I'm just going to use one because of time, but at the end of the day, you're going to get the same answer. Now, we go back, we've got 1 and 18. So this is your turning point. Now, guys, watch. You've got y is a bracket x minus 1 squared plus 18. This is your p and that is your q. Now, when you're using this equation, then you go and check any other point on the graph. Right, so now the point that we have in this case, it's 4 and not. X is 4, Y is not. So you've got not equals to A bracket 4 minus 1 squared plus 18. Then you take your 18 across minus 18 equals to A bracket 9, because you've got 4 minus 1 squared, that's 9. Then A is negative 2. True, because you can see that your parabola is facing down. So you've got your A value is negative. So you now have y equals to negative 2 bracket x minus 1 squared plus 18. Now, guys, they want it in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. So you get y is minus 2. Simplify that, you get x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus 18, which gives us y equals minus 2x squared plus 4x minus 2 plus 18. And that is minus 2x squared plus 4x plus 16. So the equation will be y equals to minus 2x squared plus 4x plus 16. So in other words, even if you use your y equals to a into x minus x1, x minus x2, you'll get minus 2x squared plus 4x plus 16. All right. So now we move on to the next one. If f of x is minus 2x squared plus 4x plus 16, calculate the coordinates of r. Now we need to work out the coordinates of r. Now, this is minus 2x squared plus 4x plus 16. Now let's go and check where r is. This is our r. What is happening at r? Those two graphs meet. It's the point of intersection. We've got the equations of those two graphs. Now, they're not only meeting in one point. This is the point of intersection. That is also the other point of intersection where x is 4, y is not. Now we need to equate, remember, when you're doing the point of intersection, in the, the, you equate the two graphs. So you've got minus 2x plus 8, minus 2x plus 8 is the same as minus 2x squared plus 4x plus 16. All right? Now we need to work out what x is. So you can take um, it across, you get 2x squared minus 6x. I've taken the 4x across, then it becomes negative. Then take the 8, it's minus 8 equals naught, right? Now, next, I've got 2x squared minus 6x minus 8. I can divide through by 2, so I get x squared minus 3x minus 4 equals to 0, right? Now, we factorize that equals naught, then x, x, 4 and 1, minus and plus. So x is 4, or x is negative 1. And there's some truth in this because when you go back, 4 and naught is a point of intersection. So it means that when you sub in your x equals to 4, in any of those two equations, you get naught. So that is our first point of intersection, but that's not the one that we're looking for. So uh, we're looking for the other one, which is r. So minus 2x plus 8. So you've got y equals minus 2x plus 8. I'm going to sub in minus, minus 1. So we get 
10. So y is 10. So the point of the section is minus 1, 10. And the other one, when you sub in the 4, you get minus 8 plus 8, which is 0, so a 4 and not. So therefore, the one that we're looking for in this case is the negative 1, 10. So r, the coordinates of r will be negative 1, 10. All right. So now that is our point of intersection that we're looking for. Now we move on next. Now, use your graph to solve for x, where f of x is greater or equals to g of x. Now, what does this mean? The function f of x is above your g of x. Now, let's just check. This is f of x. Can you see that it's below here? It's below the straight line, below the straight line. So the only part where it is above is this region. Now, we need to work out the x values there. Remember, this was minus 1, 10, okay? And this is 4, naught. Right, this graph, this is your f of x, is above your g of x at that region. So between, so x is between minus 1 and 4. So x is between minus 1 and 4. Now, guys, if you failed to look at it in a graph format, you can work it out algebraically and work it out, use your inequalities, and then from there you take your answer and then you, you write it for two marks. All right. Now, the last question on this part. Uh, the minus 2x squared plus 4x minus 2 is less than 0. Now, we use our graph. Now, remember the equation here. The equation, the function of x, f at x was minus 2x squared plus 4x plus 16. Right. Now watch. It's minus 2x squared plus 4x plus 16. So this part is the same as our function of x. But I'm missing that. So what do I do to the minus 2 to get it to 16? I'm going to add 18. So I've got minus 2x squared plus 4x minus 2 plus 18 is less than 18. Now remember, I've added 18. 18 was not there. And then add 18 on the right hand side. So I get minus 2x squared plus 4x plus 16 is less than 18. So this is our function of x is less than 18. Now, we go back, check where is our function of x less than 18. So all the way it's less than 18. But where x is 1, it is equals to 18. So you say, uh, where is it less than 18? So all the values except x may not be equal to 1. So x is an element of uh, real numbers. So you can have from minus, minus infinity to 1 or 1 to positive infinity, but you're excluding your 1. I hope that helps. I don't know if I want to say anything to my grade 12s. Is it, it's not an, is this, isn't there a break still? Eight break. <laughs> a break. <laughs> Sinclair All thought right. we were finished. How dare he? Okay. Okay, it's on. break time. And then right. I'll tell you guys how to enter the competition because I see you guys are asking a lot of questions. So see you after the break. Welcome, Mindsetters. So I know there's a bunch of new Mindsetters out there and you're quite new to the Mindset family. And basically the competition is the Learn Extra Exam Revision Marathon Competition. I know a lot of words, but it's simple. I've posted the link. All you do is click and you register. Second of all, you go to the notes, which is mindset.co.za forward slash learn extra slash revision but i'll post that as well for you so don't worry you click on that you download today's notes so you go all the way to the bottom you'll see half past three click on that maths live look at the bottom of the notes and it has like a8012 or something like that you click the okay when you find that number, then you go on to where you register, you put that number in, and your name automatically goes into six other drawers. So you could win all those Samsung prizes, and it's so simple. I've even posted just the race number for you, so you just have to click on the link. So I promise you guys, get into the competition, because the draw, yes, the draw is the next show. So stay tuned and watch to see what prizes are up for grabs. 
140. Oh, sorry for the <laughs> vernacular. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I have to teach in vernacular time. All right. Now, guys, we're moving on to the next question. We're trying to get this question questions done. You're given um, a cubic function. F of x equals to minus x cubed minus x squared plus x plus 10. They're asking you to calculate the coordinates of the turning points. Now, remember, guys, if this is a cubic function, say that's a cubic function, this is, these two are your turning points. How do you work out your turning points? Um, you find the derivative, you equate it to, to naught, you work out what x is, take that x, substitute in the original. So we're going to do uh, just that. So you've got your f prime x is negative 3 x squared minus 2 x plus 1, right? That's our derivative. Now remember the gradient here is 0, so the derivative is naught. So you've got naught equals minus 3 x squared minus 2 x plus 1. You can multiply by a negative throughout, so this is 3 x squared plus 2 x minus 1 is naught. Factorize equals to 0, we've got a 3x, x1 and 1, plus and minus, then x is a third, or x is minus 1. So you've got your two x values of the turning points. Now, what you do is, you take this and substitute in the original function. So your original function was y equals to minus x cubed minus x squared plus x, minus x cubed minus x squared plus x, plus 10, plus 10. We're just going to substitute here quickly. So you have, I'll just fix that. You've got your minus, now quickly, minus bracket, uh, bracket a third, right? So you've got one divided by three, to exponent three, right? minus uh, 1 divided by 9 quickly, 1 divided by 9, and then you've got a plus a third, and then plus 10, which gives us 10.18 roughly. Okay, you can work it out uh, at home. So it is roughly 10.18, so this is y is approximately 10.18 for the first one, so that your turning point would be 1 divided by 3 and 10, 18. Right, this is your turning point number 1. And then the turning point number 2, what you're going to do is we sub in. Now, guys, we're going to substitute with the negative, negative 1. So you're going to get the negative 1. Uh, we've got bracket negative 1 cubed times that negative. You get a plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 10, which is a 9. So that is quick, so you've got minus 1 and 9. All right, guys, sketch the graph of f, show all your intercepts with the axes and all the turning points. Now, guys, we need it here. They should have asked what is your y or x and stuff, but if they did not ask, the, your y will be when you sub in your x 0, so you get y is 10. So you've got naught and 10. So it's going to cut the y at naught and 10. So you've got your y, and then you work out uh, your x, right? If you sub in minus one, minus one, you don't get a one, so let's try two. So let's try two, right? So you've got two, using your synthetic division, you've got minus one, minus one, one, and 10. Minus one, minus one, one, and 10. Just want to find the other roots for this um, cubic function, so you get minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 6, minus 5, and negative 10, this is 0. So, now if they ask you to find your x-intercept, so you get x minus 2, bracket minus x squared minus 3x minus 5, equals to naught. So we know that x minus 2 is a factor of this. Now how about this one? Let's just check if we're going to get the real roots. Uh, we work out Let's just work out the discriminant here. So you get uh, minus 3x minus 5. So our discriminant will be b squared minus 4ac. b will be 9 minus 4a is minus 1, c is minus 5. So we get uh, 9 minus 20, which is negative 11. Now, guys, 
we're going to straight away, this is under the square root, so we're going to get a square root of negative number. So there's only one real root for this cubic function, so we only have two and not. Right, so now it's easy to, to sketch now, so you've got your, your two and zero, right? And then your y-intercept is not and 10, so we go to 10, so it's not and 10, not and 10, so I'm trying to be quick here. Our turning point is, now we've got the turning point is a third and 10.18, so it's a third somewhere there, and then 10.18, right? And we have, this is your turning point, and then the other one is negative one and nine. Negative one and nine. So I've got negative one and then nine will be somewhere there, right? So we have, this is your function. So your function should look like this. At home, guys, I'm assuming you're doing the whole question. So you're finding your x-intercepts, your y-intercept, and also the turning points I've done, the turning point I've done, your x-intercept. And in this case, this is a special case, you only have one root for this equation, which is x equals to 2. All right. So we've done that. Now, so we've got that function. Right. Now, the last question, guys. Um, you've got your g of x. This is a hyperbola. All right. C is 2 and 6. Right. Right. It's 2 and 6. So these are your asymptotes. This is x equals to 2 is your asymptote, and y equals to 6. Now, guys, quickly. Find the equation of this function in the form y equals to a divided by. We know that uh, our asymptote is 2 and the other one is 6. So x minus 2 plus 6. Now we take any point on the graph, 0 and 5 divided by 2 and 0. So you've got 0 equals to a divided by 5 divided by 2 minus 2 plus 6. And then you can work out what your a is. Now, guys, because of time, um, let me just finish this one. So I've got um, 5 minus 4, that is 8 divided by half, plus 6. So minus 6 will be 2a. Then a is minus 3. So you take this minus 3. So this is y equals to minus 3 divided by x minus 2 plus 6. Right, guys? So at home, you can quickly look at this one and redo it. So your y equals to minus 3 divided by x minus 2 plus 6. And good luck, guys, for tomorrow. Don't spend too much time on the question that you don't understand. Move on to the next one and come back later. <laughs> That's fine. I'm going to a new thing as well. Mindset is good luck, matrix, write hard, study hard. Same time, same place. Hopefully, we'll see you guys soon. Keep posting. Keep it up. Go team mindset.